Hello everyone, welcome to DSP NIT Andhra. I am Abhay from DC department going to discuss about efficient computation of TFT. Before we start our discussion, we shall take a look on the definition of discrete Fourier transform. The discrete Fourier transform is one of the most important tools in digital signal processing. The discrete Fourier transform and its inverse are the primary numerical transforms relating time and frequency in digital signal. Now we shall take a look on its expression. DFT of any given signal x of n can be further be expanded as summation of n equal to 0 to capital N minus 1 x of n w n to the power n k. And similarly we can write IDFT as 1 by n times 1 by n times of summation of k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of k w n to the power minus n k. Here w n is a quadral factor or phase factor which is equal to e power minus j 2 pi by n. Now we will calculate complexity of DFT. To find the complexity of DFT we need to know how many complex multiplications, complex addition, real multiplications, real additions and trigonometric functions are involved in direct computation of a DFT sequence. So now we will calculate how many complex additions and multiplications are involved. So first we will take the DFT expression for all k equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, so on, n minus 1. So k has n values. So we will take for one value of k, we will expand the above expression for the one value of k. We will get something like this x of k equals x of 0, wn to the power 0 plus x of 1, wn to the power of k plus x of 2, wn to the power of 2k, so on, x of n minus 1 wn to the power n minus 1 into k and here we know the signal x of n can either be a complex or real and wn which is a phase factor is always a complex one. We will take a look on this expression. So in this whole expression we see here one complex multiplication is involved here and second complex multiplication here third complex multiplication here and so on we get nth complex multiplication here similarly we see here a complex addition first complex addition here second complex addition and so on we'll get n minus one -th complex addition so we can say, say for one value of k, complex multiplications are n and complex additions are n minus 1. So like that for n values of k, we get total number of complex multiplications are n into n n square and total number of complex additions are n minus 1 into n that is n square minus n. Therefore, the total number of complex multiplications are n square and complex additions are n square minus n. Now we will calculate how many number of real multiplications and real additions are involved. Now again we will take DFT expression and now what we will do is we will write x of n in terms of real and imaginary. Similarly we will write the phase factor in terms of real and imaginary. On substituting the both expression, we can write DFT expression as like this summation of n equal to 0 to n minus 1 xr of n plus jxi of n multiplied by wrn to the power nk plus win to the power nk. So, on solving and separating real part and imaginary part, we will get DFT expression like this where xr of n wrn to power nk minus xi of n win to the power nk is the real part and 
xi of n wr into the power nk plus xr of n wi into the power nk is the imaginary part. Now we shall consider this expression the one inside the summation. So this expression the one inside the summation is only for one value of n and one value of k. So we will see for the one value of n and one value of k how many real additions and multiplications are involved. You can see here we see here first real multiplication, second real multiplication, third real multiplication, fourth real multiplication. Similarly, we see here first real addition and second real addition. So, for one value of k and n, we see there are four real multiplications and two real additions. So, for one value of k and n values of n, we can write 4n real multiplication and 2n real additions. For n values of k, we can write the total number of real multiplications are 4n square and the total number of real additions are 2n square. And this is the, not the final term. Okay, this is not the final number of computations. We considered only complex multiplication only. Now let us take a complex additions also. In a complex addition, a r plus j a i plus b r plus j b i, we will will get something like this on performing a complex addition. We will separate real part and imaginary part like this a r plus b r plus j of a i plus b i. So we see here for the one complex addition, we get here first real addition and second real addition. So for one complex addition, we get two real additions. So like that, for n square minus n complex additions, we'll get two n square minus two n real additions. Hence, the total number of real additions are two n square minus two n plus two n square. So we'll get four n square minus two n. Now, we will compute how many trigonometric functions are involved. We know DFT expression can be written like this. So, now what we will do is we can write quiddle factor or phase factor Wn power nk as something like this cos, j, cos of 2 pi nk by capital N minus j sine of 2 pi nk by capital N. So we see here for one term of quiddle factor we have two trigonometric computations. For n values of k and n we have 2 multiplied by n into n that is 2n square trigonometric computations. Okay. So we can summarize that for a n point dft we need to compute n square complex multiplication, n square minus n complex additions, 4n square real multiplications, and 4n square minus 2n real additions, and 2n square trigonometric functions. And this, this is the point to be noted. These complexities are also applicable for IDFT also. We computed these complexities for DFT, but these complexities are also applicable for IDFT. Now we'll see, we'll take an example of an 8 point DFT. For computing 8 point DFT, we need 64 complex multiplication, 56 complex addition, 256 real multiplications, 240 real additions, 128 trigonometric function computation. See, it will take a lot of time, and this process is highly inefficient. So, we need to do something to reduce this complexity. So, how to reduce complexity? First of all, we need to use we need to exploit properties of phase factor that is, periodic property wn to the power of k plus n can be written as wn to the power of k. This is one of the property of the phase factor and the 
the another property is symmetric property that is w n to the power of k plus n by 2 equals minus w n to the power of k so in direct computation we are not, we are not at all using these properties of phase factors and in f uh, in fft algorithms these properties are used pretty much therefore as a result we can reduce number of computations hence due to high complexity in computing dft using direct computation fft algorithms were introduced and they will reduce complexity as a result therefore this is the main reason we are shifting from dft to fft and these references are used for making this video thank you so much